When we add types into our language, then it turns out this affects the questions of encoding that we've looked at in the past. For example, we talked about how we can encode pairs with this function that takes an x and a y and represents the pair as yet another function that takes a selector boolean and returns either x or y as the then or else branches. And then we can have an fst operation and an snd operation. Second takes one of those pairs and passes it true to get the first thing out or passes it false to get the second thing out. And if you work through the types here, it all adds up. So here, second wants a pair, which is a bool arrow num function, right? It takes a selector and returns either the first or second part. Um, and then if you give some such a pair, then it'll give you back a num out, one of the numbers out, right? So this p here has type bool arrow num, that's the pair type, uh, passes it to false, which is loud, and we get a number out, and that's all good, right? Similarly here, we take a number to give back a function that wants a number to give back a function that gives you this pair represented as a bool arrow num function that matches up bool and these two nums. Here I'm using pairs of two numbers. It all works out if I have pairs of two booleans. You can work through the details here and make sure all the, uh, the types work out, although everything is turned into booleans. What if I have a pair that contains just a number and a boolean? Instead of both numbers and both booleans, I have different things here. So now my pair function needs to take a number and then a boolean and then return a representation of the pair that wants a selector and then what does it return? Well sometimes it returns a, a number and sometimes it returns a boolean. So it turns out that uh, the type system that we have in place doesn't let us encode pairs, at least not pairs that have numbers and booleans. Whereas encoding pairs that have numbers and booleans was no problem before we had a type system. So what's the resolution here? As we're going to see, when we try to add or uh, represent new kinds of data in a type language, this will often force us to change the type system in one way or another. And in the case of pairs, to avoid this problem, that there's no way that we can give a type to it, uh, the simplest solution is to just build pairs as primitive things into the language, not try to encode them. And the advantage of building them into the language is that now type check gets to see exactly those forms and can give them different kinds of types, and we might add new kinds of types in addition to new kinds of expressions. So in this case, we're using the tuple notation from plate to represent a pair that has one thing and some other thing, not necessarily the same thing. Uh, the type rule that goes with that is that a pair of an expression e1 and e2 is you get a type for e1 as tau1, a type for e is tau2, and that's tau1 cross tau2. So instead of an asterisk in the traditional notation here for, for writing types, we would use a, a times, uh, but it's the same thing, just different, different notations. Um, and then the rules that go with it, we also have to cover FST and SND. So first of some expression E is if you type it, it's got to have a cross type and then the type of first is the type from the first part and the type for second is the type of the second one. So it's clear how we can write type check directly and have non-homogeneous pairs, pairs that have a number uh, and a boolean. It just turns out that type check can't deal with the encoding. So to solve that problem again, we just end up building pairs as primitives. There are other ways to solve this problem, and we're going to look at some of those ways, and we're going to look at what happens when we add different kinds of data that we want to represent as well.